Hello everyone, in this video I am going to tell you about inguinal hernias. So basically what are inguinal hernias? In these hernias there will be protrusion of the abdominal cavity contents through the inguinal canal. So the inguinal canal is having two openings, what is deep inguinal ring and another is superficial inguinal ring. So in between these two is inguinal canal. So whenever any abdominal content or you can say any abdominal organ part will be protruding through this inguinal canal and it will be extending from deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring or maybe further beyond that so that is known as inguinal hernias so now we have to see about the anatomical or you can say the main anatomical boundaries of the inguinal canal so that we can understand it quite clearly that what is happening in case of inguinal hernias so the, the if this is the inguinal canal and this is the deep inguinal ring and this is the superficial inguinal ring so what and the anterior wall uh, uh, the anterior wall will be covered by external oblique aponeurosis and internal oblique muscles so external oblique aponeurosis and internal oblique muscles will be covering the anterior wall that means the wall which is uh, which will be in the front so the posterior wall will be uh, formed by the transverse fascia and the conjoint, conjoint tendon so the posterior wall the wall behind the inguinal canal will be formed by these two structures the superficial wall or you can say the roof will be formed by internal oblique muscles and transverse abdominis muscle so they will be forming the superficial or you can say sup uh, sorry superior wall or the roof of the inguinal canal inferior wall will be formed by inguinal ligament so the inguinal ligament will be forming the inferior wall while inlet will be formed by the internal foramen this will we can say the inlet or from where it will be entering and outlet will be the external foramen outlet will be the external foramen so the contents of the inguinal canal varies from uh, from male to female for example in male the contents of the inguinal canal will be spermatic cord and in female the contents will be round ligament of the uterus so now we will see about the types of the inguinal hernias so basically there are uh, two types we can uh, divide it into two types or you can say two classification we have done here one is by genesis and another is by mechanism of development so in case of the genesis it can be uh, congenital or acquired and by mechanism of development it will be direct indirect and sliding hernias so what we have to remember here that in congenital indirect inguinoscrotal and sliding hernias will be there while acquired will be direct indirect inguinoscrotal and sliding one important point you have to remember from here is that direct hernias are never congenital so in congenital and acquired uh, mostly all of the hernias are same except the direct hernias will be acquired they cannot be congenital so now we will see the two main uh, hernias or you can say two main types and what is the pathogenesis or you can say how they are forming so in case of first we will see the indirect hernias so in case of the indirect hernias uh, if this will be the deep inguinal ring or you can say inlet and this will be the superficial inguinal ring or the outlet so in this case uh, if this is the you can say protruding part of any uh, abdominal content or any uh, structure in, present in the abdomen for example small intestine omentum so they can protrude through this these two uh, rings so through the inguinal canal so in case of indirect uh, we have to remember one important point that it is uh, this inferior epigastric artery is present uh, medially or you can say the hernia the hernial sac is present laterally to the inferior epigastric artery as it is present laterally to the inferior uh, epigastric artery so in case of uh, indirect hernia the hernial contents will be present laterally so uh, further it can be divided into three types three forms you can say in case of indirect hernia they can be canal form cord form and inguinoscrotal form so what are these form canal form for example if uh, any uh, small intestine part will protrude through this ring and it will reach up till this superficial inguinal ring then we can say in, it is canal form as it is not coming out of that ring so up till here it will be canal form cord form will be when it will come out of that superficial inguinal ring and it will cover 
half of the scrotum so that will be the cord form while inguinoscrotal form is that in which it will cover the full inguinal canal and it will cover the full scrotum or testis so that is known as inguinoscrotal type so as you can see here clearly uh, it is another diagram uh, in an explained manner if this is the inferior epigastric artery this is the peritoneum this is the deep inguinal ring this is the superficial inguinal ring so th if this is a small intestine uh, loop it will be coming out through both of the rings and it will be uh, lateral to the inferior epigastric artery and also uh, it passes in the front of spermatic cord so it will pass in front of the this is the spermatic cord and its content so spermatic it will pass in front of the spermatic cord now if we will see uh, in direct hernia so what is happening in the direct hernia in direct hernia if uh, this is uh, I'll explain you from this diagram so if this is the deep inguinal ring and this is the superficial inguinal ring so the contents will be you can say they will enter through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal so posterior wall of the inguinal canal they will be entering and through Hizelbeck triangle this is an important triangle I'll tell you about it later so they will protrude through this and they will be uh, coming out behind the or you can say uh, behind the spermatic cord they will be covering the superficial or you can say they will be crossing the superficial inguinal ring behind the uh, spermatic cord so this is the main difference like we have to check the lo localization of the inferior epigastric artery if inferior epigastric artery in this it will be present uh, in case of medially uh, as a uh, in contrast to this hernial sac it is uh, laterally but according to this inferior epigastric artery the uh, hernial sac is present medial so that's the main difference between these two hernias that in case of indirect hernias uh, the hernia is present lateral to the inferior epigastric artery while in case of direct hernias the hernial sac is present uh, medial to the inferior epigastric artery so now the Hazelbeck triangle so Hazelbeck triangle is basically just a triangle from which the direct hernial sac will be uh, you can say crossing over so it got uh, four boundaries for example it's medially it has lateral border of rectus of abdominis muscle Le uh, in case of laterally side its lateral side will be covered by inferior epigastric vessels as you can see here laterally here will be inferior epigastric vessels below will be medial part of the inguinal ligament so medial part of the inguinal ligament will be below this Hazelbeck triangle and floor will be formed by the transverse fascia so these are the main important boundaries that you have to remember for Hazelbeck triangles now we will see uh, if now we have seen the diagrammatic representation we will see the uh, chart or you can say uh, the written form so here uh, the sac enters the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring so i have told you it will enter through the deep inguinal ring lateral to the inferior epigastric artery it will be laterally present to the inferior epigastric artery passes through the inguinal canal in front of spermatic cord so it passes through the inguinal canal in front of spermatic cord in uh, front of spermatic cord so it will be coming like this in front of spermatic cord may or may not come out as i have told you about these forms it may not come out it may come out and it descends to scrotum if it comes out it descends to scrotum so in indirect hernia it is the most common uh, you can say form of all types of hernias now in case of direct hernias the sac enter through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal so it will be entering from here the posterior wall of the inguinal canal medial to the inferior epigastric artery it will be present medially to the inferior epigastric artery medially through the Hazelbeck triangle through this triangle and behind the spermatic cord so spermatic cord will be present in front of it so behind the spermatic cord and it mostly occurs in case of elderly patient so these are the main you can say uh, difference between indirect and direct hernia uh, etiogenesis and patho uh, pathology so now we will see about the clinical manifestations like when the patient will come what will be the clinical manifestations of that patient so first of all oval or round shaped protrusion will be present in the groin or scrotum area this is the first 
characteristic uh, sign we have to see then episodic dull pain will be present in scrotum or the uh, pain will be uh, locally only so local pain will be present only that part in which hernia is protruding only uh, the hernial sac is irritating only those nerve fibers so it will be locally the pain will be locally and it is episodic dull pain episodic means it will occur whenever there is increase in abdominal tension or increase in intra-abdominal pressure so in only that cases the pain will be appearing so in this case the protrusion may disappear while lying as during lying there is decrease in the intra-abdominal pressure so it may disappears and it may appear again in case of standing walking coughing or in any sort of abdominal distension for example in case of any exercises stretching exercises in case of any gym workout you are doing so in that cases they will again reappear so patient feel quite uncomfortable while walking in these cases there will be also nausea and constipation and dysuria if it, it is sliding hernia and in this case the bladder will be involved so that will be causing dysuria also that means painful or difficulty in urination also there is characteristic positive cuff push sign positive cuff push sign so what is this sign so let me tell you if my this hand is uh, you can say uh, hernia uh, if this finger is uh, the hernial sac so if I will be palpating through this hand on this part then I ask the patient to cuff if he cups then there will be increase in intra-abdominal tension that will lead to the hernial sac to protrude outside so when it protrude outside my uh, the fingers will be feeling that protrusion so this is known as cuff push sign so the hernial sac will be pushing my fingers so this is known as cuff push sign so these are the main clinical manifestation now about the diagnosis so in diagnosis uh, hernial visceral examination is done visual examination sorry is done in lying and standing position so it is the main characteristic diagnosis hernial palpation as I told you uh, cuff push sign we can see uh, consistency we can see of hernial sac painful if it is painful or not intestinal murmur we can hear in case of percussion we can hear tympanic or dull sound so if it is tympanic then it will the hernial sac will most probably be having bowel loops if it is dull then omentum will be present in case of hernial contents while finger examination i have told you earlier cuff push sign will be positive and there is also a trans illumination test in which there is transmission of light through the swelling so there will be transmission of light through the swelling and it will be positive in case of inguinoscrotal hernia because the skin will be very much thinned out so the trans illumination test will be positive so these are the main clinical manifestation generally that we will see now I told you about direct indirect hernia so let's uh, see more detail about the, both of these uh, hernias because in most of the examination they are very much asked frequently so direct hernia is only acquired I told you on the first page of my notes that here uh, it is only acquired direct it will not come in congenital while it can be indirect can be congenital or acquired uh, it is most commonly in older age so this is also we have discussed earlier and it is most commonly in younger age and also it is the most common type of hernia that is present it is bilateral so it can be present on both the sides while uh, indirect hernia is usually unilateral only one side is involved there is round shape protrusion only by the external ring of the inguinal canal so in direct hernia I have told you through this diagram the uh, protrusion will be through the only uh, external ring of the inguinal canal so this will be the external ring the protrusion will be only through this part while in case of uh, uh, this indirect hernia the protrusion will be across the uh, oblique course along the inguinal canal so it will be in the whole inguinal canal so fr from the uh, you can say uh, internal ring and the external ring it will be having in both the rings so rarely it will be inguinoscrotal so in this case inguinoscrotal hernia rarely occurs while in this case in the indirect hernias inguinoscrotal usually occurs quite commonly and 
uh, it appears on standing and reaches full size immediately so in case of direct hernia it reaches full size immediately like when the patient will stand there will be sudden increase in the intraabdominal pressure and uh, it will reach the hernial sac will reach its size immediately while in case of indirect it does not reaches full size immediately so this is a, another an important point and it reduces on lying immediately so vice versa as if it standing it is increasing then lying it will be immediately reduced in case of direct while it does not reduces immediately in case of indirect also the neck of the sac is wide in case of direct uh, hernias so the neck of the sac the hernial sac neck will be wide while in case of indirect the neck of the sac will be narrowed and also in direct hernias uh, there will be weakened posterior wall as i have told you earlier that the posterior wall uh, is having uh, this transverse fascia transverse fascia will be present on the posterior wall and conjoint tendon so that will be weakened and dilated external ring of the inguinal canal because it is coming out mainly through the external ring so there will be dilation of the external ring only while in case of indirect hernia weakened anterior wall that is external oblique aponeurosis and in internal oblique muscle will be weakened and dilated both the rings internal and external ring because it is coming through the whole course of the inguinal canal and also in this cuffing push sign is against the internal ring that i told uh, that is quite obvious because it is coming only out from the external ring and in this the cuffing push sign is against the internal foramen so it is mainly against the internal foramen while next uh, difference is it is this is the most important you can say difference between both of these that is in case of direct hernias it is medial to the inferior epigastric vessels so medial i have shown you in this i'll show you in this diagram it is medial it is present medially to the inferior epigastric vessel while in case of lateral hernias it is present uh, sorry in the case of indirect hernias it is present lateral it is present laterally to the inferior epigastric vessel so this is the main characteristic difference between these two hernias and also in this hernial sac is outside the spermatic cord layer or you can say it is behind the spermatic cord layers so spermatic cord layers will be present in front of this hernial sac while in case of indirect hernias uh, it is in front of spermatic cord layers that means spermatic cord layer is behind this uh, hernial sac so next exam uh, next difference is sliding is common in this uh, direct hernias the sliding is quite common while in case of indirect hernias uh, sliding is not so common also strangulation in this case it is quite uncommon while in case of indirect the strangulation is quite commonly seen so these are the main differences that you have to uh, remember for indirect and direct hernias and that's it for this video in the next video we will be discussing about uh, sliding hernias and diagnosis and treatments for inguinal hernias thank you